Matt McKeever here with the man, the myth, the legend, Casey Wong. You guys have been demanding it, so Casey carved out some time and we're actually in his office today. I have no money, I have no experience. What do I do? How do I get started? Yeah. When I started, same thing. I was 28, well 27, because I bought my first place when I was 28 years old. Basically, real estate is almost like a bicycle. How to start in real estate. Let me come back here. I'm gonna be using a lot of paper. We, we identify ourselves a lot with uh, sort of big corporations. They can actually let you go really, really quickly. And people come to me and they're like, I love my job, I'd never quit my job, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah. cool, but your job can quit you. Hey, like, get this when you're young, okay? Because when you're old, like me, you don't have time for all these. You don't. Okay. I'd rather be a chicken head than a dragon tail. You guys have been demanding it, so here it is. We've got more Casey Wong on Matt McKeever's YouTube channel. Smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And in today's video, I sit down with Casey at his office in Toronto and we discuss his philosophy when it comes to real estate investing, kind of his approach to building your portfolio, and just some life philosophies as well, and a lot more in today's video. Again, we're really excited to have Casey back on the channel. We're hoping that we're going to produce more content with Casey. If you guys want to see more videos with Casey, jump in that comment section and let us know. We're also releasing some exclusive content on Facebook, so make sure you're following me on Facebook. Make sure you check out Cashflow Tribe Canada on Facebook. We've got a beta group that's free to join. We've got tons of stuff. We're just producing so much content these days, guys, that you need to be following us on every social media platform. We'll even soon be doing regular content on TikTok, maybe. I don't know, I just made that up. Anyways, smash the like button and we'll dive into today's video with Casey Wong. What is up, you guys? Matt McKeever here with the man, the myth, the legend, Casey Wong. You guys have been demanding it, so Casey carved out some time, and we're actually in his office today. So one, appreciate you letting us sit down in your office, Casey. But two, we're essentially gonna dive into some advice for younger real estate investors. So there's a bit of a backstory here. Yeah, well, thanks for coming over here, Matt. Um, driving all the way from London. So people ask me a lot of times that uh, actually getting calls and uh, people start stopping me in meetups saying, how do I get started? Uh, I have no money, have no experience. And this, this person, um, this Filipino gentleman, nice guy, tall and handsome. Uh, I think his name was either Chris or Daniel. And he comes up to me and goes, um, how do I get, like he actually pulled me away from conversation. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, and I go, and he goes up to me and goes, um, I have no money. I have no experience, what do I do? How do I get started? Yeah. And I think a lot of people start that way. They don't know what to do. Um, but that's great because now you know what the problem is, right? Yeah. So if you know the problem, you're gonna try to solve it, right? Mm -hmm. When I started, same thing. I was 28, well 27, because I bought my first place when I was 28 years old. So 27 is when we started um, looking at properties. I had gotcha. didn't, didn't have a lot of money, uh, graduated from U of T, uh, business background, so a Bachelor of Commerce, um, student loans and all that, but I did pay that, up, pay that off fairly quickly with, uh, I had OSAP, it's called, um, uh, it's a loan from, uh, from the government to, uh, for students, and then I quickly paid that off flipping stocks, so I got lucky there. Oh, okay. Uh, but another story, another time. Um, so I did that, and then looking for properties, and um, I'll delve, delve into that later. Uh, but what I wanna say now is that, um, basically, real estate is almost like a bicycle. So let me... Uh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so here's a... Okay, so how does a bike go, right? Triangles, right? Mm-hmm. It's a good bicycle. Yeah, something like that, right? And then here's the saddle. So here's your bicycle, and what's it, seriously, what's, what is it like? Bicycle and real estate. So bicycle, you can analyze this to death, right? So I can say, I can, uh, uh, how, to, how to books, uh, uh, books for dummies or whatever these these books getting you started on anything from programming coding financial uh, uh, Literacy things like that, but riding a bike so you can analyze it to death, right? You yeah. can say okay. Well, I need a balance. I gotta uh, I gotta cruise I gotta be able to pedal steer all of that so you can 
go to um, research, lectures on bicycles, mm -hmm. do all this, and, and get the intricacies of, of a bicycle. But listen, you're not gonna be able to ride a bike until you actually get on it. Yeah. So you, like, even if I read about steering, okay, I have a PhD in steering, right? You're not gonna learn until you actually get on a bike and know how to steer, how to balance things like that. It's almost the same thing as real estate. You guys, I see a lot of people going to meetups. You probably see the same thing. Yes. Meetups after meetups, um, seminars after seminars, you're paying a lot of money. You can be paying like, I don't know, some people I've heard paid anywhere from like 10 to 20K, right, in courses. But the thing is that you gotta actually start doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Until you start doing it, then you start learning. Until you get on that bike, then you know how to steer, then you know how to balance. Then you know how to coast, now you know how to glide and get to your destination, okay? It's the same thing here as it is here, okay? So if you have all this head knowledge, right? It comes to the point where it comes here, okay? It's yeah. where you, it, you, the gut feel, the, the heart, you actually have to jump, right? Mm -hmm. um, so get on that bike and then you're gonna fall. Like, I think we all learn how to ride a bike when we're young. It's easy, right? You get on it as a child, you, 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 you get your scrapes and whatever bumps and you, you learn all that. But now when you come here, we've been ingrained through school and all that to analyze and make sure it's, like I'm not saying, like uh, you you're, spend the time analyzing, okay? But don't waste it, don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. Like five years, 10 years, I don't know how long people wait. So I know a lot of people that spend like literally like 10 years or, or how like, 20 years and you just wasted a whole bunch of time out of the market. So that's my little two bit of fluff talk, right? For bicycle slash real estate. I don't know if that yeah. helps for, for this boy, uh, for this gentleman, I think it's Chris or Daniel. I met him at, uh, at this meetup and honestly, like I'll talk about getting um, money and the experience later. So that's my little thing about getting into, uh, getting to real estate is that you actually have to start doing it. Okay, Absolutely. so that's that's one. Any, any anything for me for this? Uh, so I guess like just any suggestions on how to get over that fear of falling? Because I think a lot of people like school really instills kind of a feel a uh, fear of failure in my opinion. And so a lot of people are scared to like look like a fool or make a mistake. Yeah. So like any thoughts on how to kind of overcome that? Getting um, answering all your questions, um, the difficult ones, the problems. Make sure you have a solution before it happens. Right, mm -hmm. so let's say riding a bike. You're gonna ride your bike in a like in a school playground or whatever. There's no cars around, right? You're not riding a bike close to the uh, like high traffic area. Same thing in real estate. You can have all those problems laid out. So um, let's say plumbing issues with, uh, or finding money, uh, yeah. getting experience. You're 22 years old. How are you gonna raise money? Nobody's gonna trust you. But how are you gonna navigate that? So I'll touch upon that a little bit okay, later. So cool. we'll go through all of that. So at least people know exactly what to do, when to do it and how to do it, right? Awesome. Like, this is like how to. How to start in real estate. So when you, when you want to start in real estate, um, there's gonna be a few things that you don't have, right? You don't have the money, you don't have the experience, mm -hmm. right? So. You don't have the money. Money. And you have no experience. So you don't have money, you don't have an ex experience. You're going to, no money, you're gonna go through the path of least resistance, okay? That's, seriously, it's gonna be mommy and daddy, okay? Yeah. Mommy, daddy, you're gonna to talk to that. Uh, talk to them about this, okay? And you get to show them your, your prior experience, okay? It's not experience in real estate. No experience in real estate, all right? So, no money. These are your parents or people close to it. Or somebody, let's say friends, parents, or things like that. So you have to look for people that have that money. Yeah, right? someone that you already have like a deep relationship with. Exactly. They're the best people to, to go and ask for money, mm -hmm. okay? Um, 
and I'll talk to you about that. I know that Ben Humble talked about advice and counsel. That's great. Yeah. Okay, I actually want to put that in because you know what? Uh, shout out to like Ben Humble and these guys, Matt Piche, uh, Sarah Larby. Um, all these people are doing things that it's out of the ordinary. It's not the norm. Yes. Okay. So. I'll touch upon that. If I, if I forget, let me know. So yeah. you have no money and you have no experience, okay? So what do you do? Are you guys enjoying this video? Are you looking to raise money yourself? Did you know in my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, I help you break down exactly what your JV avatar should look like, what your ideal money partner should look like, or what your ideal lender should look like. As well, we put together a package where you can start presenting to them a little mini pitch deck. It's really important as an investor that we get our story clear and we get it concisely figured out so we can present it to potential money partners or to potential private lenders. If you guys are interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, whether it be in real life here in the mansion or just through a phone call, check out the link in the video description that we'll throw down below for you guys. No money and you have no experience, okay? So what do you do, right? The experience actually, here's a quick little fluff talk, and fluff talk number two is that um, my daughter, my, my first daughter, uh, her name is Caitlin. Okay, these are just experiences for what I, I get through life. Okay, um, she's part of this NIAC, it's called North York Aquatic something. She's in this competitive swimming, not the best. Okay, but you know, it's good that you know that she does some type of sports. All of my kids have they're, they're in some type of competitive sport now. It's like February, it's like February is dead of winter, it was, it was just this past winter, and it was like we got to the uh. Um, to the Olympic uh, whatever swimming in Scarborough and they actually canceled it I was like well I woke up at 6 30 okay 6, six or 6 30 I woke up at 6 or 6 30 to drive my daughter uh, to swimming and we didn't get an email that was canceled okay so I was like what we didn't get an email everybody's here like 30 or 40 kids are here let us in okay you made a mistake you didn't send the cancellation email and get the get the kids swimming Anyways, they, they got them swimming, and then the, uh, the mothers, there's actually all mothers there, I don't know why, so my wife is, because we had a baby, because I'm out there driving. So, the mother goes, another mother goes, how do you get your kids out of bed, okay? 6.30, and it's like, uh, it takes me half an hour to get my kid out of bed. I go, no, it doesn't take me long. I go into her bedroom, I tap her on her feet, bang, she's up, okay? Get going. That's what I said. This is a true story, okay? Bang, I get, get her up. And then that's what I'm telling the, uh, the ladies there. And then I go, um, and it's like, how do you do that? It's like, I tap her and I go, get up or else, right? It's 6.30, man. It's like, it's a Saturday morning. I don't want to, I don't want to be here at 6.30. I want to be sleeping, yeah. right? So, and then uh, the big Russian lady goes, Casey, uh, he didn't say Casey, he goes, yo, little short man. <laughs> she wanted to say that, I know that. Yo, little short man, what do you mean, or else, right? Or else, or else what, right? I'm like, or else nothing. Because <laughs> I'm gonna go back to sleep. The thing is that I already, I already taught her, okay? My daughter, I already taught her that you get up. That's your responsibility. Your responsibility is school and your activities. Right, so I, I tell her that these these are it's ingrained in her, right? Just like for, for all of us. So that's where it comes experience. Yeah, you don't have experience in real estate, but you have my kids or anybody will have that experience in school, in 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 uh, your sports activity. So now I know my child. I know how she's going to be working. I know she's dedicated. I know she's hardworking. Okay. So no, yeah, you don't have experience in real estate, but. I know I can put my daughter here as in how to get started. Like, I believe that she can work hard. If something is in front of her, okay, be it swimming or real estate or fashion or whatever she wants to do in the future, she has that work ethic. And going back to that person, Chris or Daniel, your parents, the people that you know, will know you best, right? You yeah. don't know real estate, but you're a hardworking person. Somebody taps that, that Filipino boy, who, Chris or Daniel, he's gonna get up, right? Mm -hmm. So I can see it that, hey, Matt, he's a CA. Um, he's been working hard, he understands the, um, the financial world, uh, the risk, things like that. I'm pretty sure somebody tapped him on, the, on the, his feet or, or whatever. Yeah. 
that made you to get out of bed to work hard. Yeah. Everybody has that, okay? And those are the people that you would actually go back to and say, hey, would you like to invest with me, okay? So that's, that's one thing. Um, how to get started is going to these people. And no experience, uh, we'll talk about that as well. Um, but I have it in my notes that I wanna talk about something here, okay? So let me come back here. I'm gonna be using a lot of paper. No problem. I'll come back to that. Stool slash income. You're like, we just gotta have a dog here uh, that we just uh, um, got and it's a King Corso. Stool doesn't sound right, <laughs> but a stool is this. A stool is this. Okay, I'm writing this. Okay, well here's a seat. Normally stool has this, right? These are the legs. So stool is here, whatever. Normally has four legs, right? Nice and stable, all right? But when you come out from school, like from school, you yeah. can have one job, all right? So you get where I'm getting at. You have this one income source, all right? Mm -hmm. So let's say this is income. Right? Yeah. This is a regular stool, nice and stable. You have four legs keeping you up, right? This income source is basically one job, okay? Listen, we all been there. We've all started working. Yeah. We almost define ourselves with our jobs, right? Yes, a lot right? of people, yeah. Right? So, CAs or, or um, your doctor, your lawyer, you wanna be, working for yourself, working for a hospital, a reputable law firm, mm -hmm. uh, accounting firms, um, whatever, the big fours, yep. the banks, things like that. We almost define ourselves by, by employers, right? So it could be a bank, it could be a CA firm, it could be a law firm, but we almost identify ourselves with those companies, right? Yeah. I did that. Mm -hmm. I worked for TD Bank, TD Asset Management, so I did BCOM, UFT, um, uh, uh, Toronto Bank, so TD, uh, TD Asset Management, then I moved on um, to CIBC Asset Management, Towers Perrin, which is a pension consulting company, and then I actually moved out when we started uh, buying more properties into more property management companies, um, which I tend to like um, doing, doing more property management. But we, we identify ourselves a lot with uh, sort of big corporations. Mm -hmm. We wanna be, hey, it's like, oh, I'm a big shot. I work for, I work for TD Asset Management, TD Bank, yeah. right? But the thing is that, to be honest with you, they can actually let you go really, really quickly. Yes. Right, you had experience with this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And something that I find way too often, people come to me and they're like, I love my job, I'd never quit my job, blah, blah, and I'm like, cool, but your job can quit you. That's and right. it's really important to understand that distinction. That's right. So I like that. I like that when he said that, job can quit you. Dude, it happens, it happens a lot. It happens more so when you're, to be honest with you, older, okay? Yeah. When you're older, they're, most likely, hey, you're earning quite a bit of money. Yeah, you're at the high end you're of the, the pay scale. Level, okay, they can, they can fire your ass re like really quickly, okay? So you have to have a backup. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned that the hard way, okay? I was at CIBC Asset Management, and I was on contract. I actually wanted to be on contract because it actually paid more. Um, it was a little bit more, it was like, at that time it was like 70 or 80,000 in total, okay? And this has been way back in the early 2000s, so it was a little bit more, yeah. and I knew that, okay? But on a Friday night, I get a voice message, oh. right? I was like, yeah, you don't have to come in Monday morning, right? I was like, what? So that, that was a turning point for me to, to get into real estate. It could, it could, listen, it could be the upside. People can have that goal in mind, mm -hmm. um, having you know lying on the beach or whatever right mine was a downside risk yeah i don't ever want to have that happen to me again that's what that's what stuck in, in my head was that dude this is not going to happen to me again i'm going to have a backup yeah right so, yeah i hate that feeling of loss of control yeah i don't want that loss of control so what i'm getting here at here is this here's your stool again but yeah here's the income listen you get a raise right you just increased it. 
You're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're, bang. A little bit more stable, but you probably spend more too. I don't know, yeah. depends. Usually people spend a little bit more. So here's a nice little leg. You work for a nice company. I know, I know a lot of my friends, okay? Not a lot, but people that's earning anywhere from about 200 to 400 k annually, all right? That doesn't mean it's fairly stable. It just means that you're living a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. What you wanna be able to do is do this. Once you get this income, let's say these are rental properties, okay? That's only $100 to maybe $300 per unit, right? Yeah. Get the unit size up, right? So $100 to $300, mine are, yeah, about anywhere from like two to 400 now. Multiply it by the number of units, right? Then it becomes a lot more stable. You take this source away, you have these things to rely on. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That's more of a visual, hey, like, get this when you're young, okay? Because when you're old, like me, you don't have time for all these. You don't, okay? So this gentleman, uh, Chris, Chris or Daniel, uh, pulling me up in, in this meetup, it's like, yeah, um, start here. Start early and make sure you get the experience. Now, working for a company is great. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're almost defined um, with that company, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Let's touch upon that again. Working on your own, okay? This is your, your own, right? This is your income from the job, but this I like to say is, is you're self-employed, okay? You're getting there. But it's always b better, okay? I would like to say that your, your, your banks and your CA firms is almost like this. You're part of a dragon. You're a tail of a dragon. This, these small little things right here, you're like a chicken, chicken head. Okay. I'd rather be a chicken head than a dragon tail. Does that make sense? I'd rather be a chicken head than a dragon tail. I'd rather be self-employed, have control, be head of me, and have that control, then be part of these one, these firms, okay? Then being a dragon tail. Because yeah, you're associated with these big firms, but you have no control. Yeah, that makes okay. a lot of sense. How to get started, right? Yeah. Now, how I started was this. When I was 27 years old, I wanted to buy one that one property. Thanks again to Casey for taking the time to sit down with us. We've got a lot more Casey content coming, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Smash the like button and we'll see you in the next video.